Department of Bioengineering started around 2003. Um, there has been biomedical and bioengineering at Stanford for many, many years, and lots of contributions have been made, but we've never had a department. Finally, around that time in 2003, the deans of medicine and engineering, instead of saying, it needs to be in my department, it needs to be in my department, they said, why don't we make this department be in both schools? That decision was critically important and brilliant because now we have this department that has roots both in the School of Medicine with its excellence in biology, science, clinical care, and in the School of Engineering with excellence in the discovery of new methods and new technologies to be applied to problems that society has. For me, bioengineering is a discipline that figures out uh, you know, either biological, chemical, mechanical, any kinds of means to truly communicate with um, what life does and, you know, then figure out what it's good for. Bioengineering is the science of engineering where the substrate, where the tools are from biology. We think like engineers, but we understand the biology, and our goals are uh, to build, design, repair, uh, and study biological systems quantitatively. Bioengineers have uh, two missions. The first mission is to understand biology and medicine and the problems, the scientific questions that are vexing at the moment, but they also have a toolkit, an engineering toolkit for solving problems, for designing the solution and implementing it. Another key advantage that Stanford has in establishing the Department of Bioengineering is that the School of Medicine and the School of Engineering are literally across the street from one another. You can basically walk from engineering school to medical school just by crossing the campus drive, and that's just fabulous. And you can run into all people from all different departments in the cafeteria, and I think that is really something that stimulates you know, the next generation of bioengineering research. There's no place like Stanford. Uh, and the big reason, I would say, is because if you take my office uh, in the Clark Center here, if I look out one window, I see one of the best engineering schools in the world, and if I look out the other window, I see one of the best medical schools in the world. And that's not enough by itself. You also need a culture where people really are open to this kind of stuff. They kind of like, you know, happy to cross over boundaries and are comfortable, speak a little bit of the languages these other people speak so they can communicate with them. There's another way that Stanford supports our work, which is uh, having a business school also on the same campus. So we tap into the faculty there uh, who advise us on how to actually commercialize these technologies. It's, the cool inventions aren't cool unless they make it into patient care. And you also have sort of activities around um, uh, the law school, right, which allows us to think about um, uh, sort of societal implications as well of the technologies that we're developing. The impact of Silicon Valley is partly inspirational because there's a sense of can-do uh, attitude that is in the whole community around us. Of course, a lot of that was born in Stanford. Stanford and Silicon Valley have a great history of working hand in hand together to change the world. And we all know about the IT revolution and the role that Stanford played in that. Many people, including us, believe that one of the next big waves of innovation and technology application in society is going to be biotechnology. Stanford is an amazing place for people interested in interdisciplinary problems like myself. Uh, when we first got some crazy ideas for how we might develop a non-invasive prenatal test for Down syndrome. It didn't take long for the doctors to sign on and begin collecting clinical samples so we could actually uh, try out our scheme. In my research group, we are particularly interested in a research area in bioengineering called tissue engineering. And the purpose of this field is really trying to develop therapy so that we can um, get biological replacements to restore the lost tissue and function that is caused due to uh, diseases such as osteoarthritis, cancer, etc. We work on uh, something that uh, we call optogenetics, which is the use of light to control cells, to make them do uh, what we want, even if they're embedded within very complex uh, large uh, systems with many other cells that we don't want to interfere with. One is concerned with the biophysics of development, essentially understanding how from a single egg a full body like ours develop. We develop and design molecules that we can put into cells that will basically act as information processing and control devices, allow the cell to receive different types of information, and then direct that information to different types of actionable responses. We're trying to implement the equivalent of data storage. We're trying to build data storage systems out of the pieces of biology itself at the molecular level. My background is in theoretical physics, and I use physical concepts 
to apply to biological systems to try to understand how, in my case, cells organize. We work on the discovery of genes that control different processes in development, development of embryos. We use different animals and try to discover how genes control the formation of organs and tissues. We have a group of inventive young engineers and physicians who work together to develop new technologies. Uh, they start from scratch, they go into the hospital in a medical area, see the problems, and wind up inventing a new technology at the end. We have a very broad group. Uh, we go from uh, thinking about how uh, flies feed and how fireflies blink and try to really understand the mechanistic details of these uh, uh, simple observations. I call myself a neuroengineer, so that means that I'm interested in the brain and um, I'm working on trying to understand how it works. How does it compute? You know, what makes it different from a computer? What makes it so much more powerful? What makes it use energy much more efficiently? One thing that is a huge goal of the lab, and I'm uh, excited to say will be finished probably sometime this year, is to make the first ever computer model of an entire cell. We work on molecular motors. Uh, many of the molecular motors um, that we study right, can be targeted by drugs that inhibit their function or inhibit their function in very specific ways uh, and can be used to cure disease. Working in the bioengineering department has been incredibly exciting. The faculty, the students, the staff, they're, they're united in purpose to kind of let's build this, let's make it great. Of course there are challenges, there are things that have never been done before either at Stanford or ever, but the positive attitude of my coworkers makes me very confident that we can succeed.